Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and I recently made a video about surfaces in Game Maker. And I also recently made a video about texture management in Game Maker. And neither of those are inherently 3D, although texture management does inevitably come up on occasion when you're doing 3D games. But it turns out that when you combine those two subjects, you're able to do some interesting things in 3D. And in 2D, but especially in 3D. So this is the this is the state of my my 3D demos when I did the fake shadows video not too long ago. Uh, there is a there is a fake shadow beneath me and some other things, and I am real quickly going to uh, write in. Let's make this resource tree a little bit bigger. I'm going to write in some code that gives me the ability to do something akin to what I had in the surfaces video where I paint on the screen. Uh, let me do that real quick. Let's see how quickly I can get through this. Okay, here we go. So if I if I click and drag on this little rectangle up in the corner of the screen, 256 by 256, I will be able to draw a little picture, uh, very much like I had in that um in that surface demo video not too long ago, and it'll stay there if I go back into uh, free movement mode. And something I did not mention in the uh, in the texture management video not too long ago is that you can use surfaces as textures as well, in addition to uh, in addition to just things like sprites and fonts and tile sets. So if you go into uh, the debugger, as I did a couple times in that video, and if I were to scribble around on that thing a little bit, and pause the game, and go to surfaces and textures down here, uh, if you hit refresh, you can see all the surfaces that I have. There is that default thing, there is the grass tile, there is the shadow uh, sprite, and there is all the other stuff that doesn't fit anywhere else. And if I go over to surfaces, and hit refresh here, you can see there are two surfaces. One is the screen. This is the application surface. I've mentioned this a number of times. There is also apparently a little bit of cutout in the application surface from the, uh, the player shadow. That's interesting. And there is uh, the thing I was scribbling on, which you can see right here. It, uh, it has not gone away the way it would if you minimize the game because it, it stays in memory there. You can use this as a texture. So, and I'm just curious because I've never actually done this. If I resume the game, Okay, that's cool. The uh, the sprite the the surface does not evaporate if you pause the game into bug mode and, and send it away. That's interesting. That's all I wanted to know. So there is another function you can use, which is called if I can go into somewhere where it would be useful to me. Let's go into the draw event here. Surface get texture. Uh, let's put this on the floor first. Where is this? Is the floor? I believe yes. This is the floor. So you have another function. Surface get texture. And you can pass it a surface ID, which in my case is player dot paint surface painting surface painting surf. Good enough. And you can do you can do all the usual texture things with this. You can save it to a variable called paint text or whatever you want. And you can you can also more importantly assign it as the texture that you uh, stick into a vertex buffer when you submit it. Such as that. So now when I run the game, instead of using the uh, the grass texture, the ground is now going to be drawn with whatever I draw on here. That is very cool. Let me erase that by by minimizing the game so that the surface evaporates and has to be recreated. So that's cool. I can draw on the floor, and uh, not only that, but I can also draw on the floor tiled because uh, each of these squares is the entire width and height of uh, of the texture, zero to one, and that means that each of these squares has um has whatever I scribbled on it. Ah, all right, that's fun. You can uh, you can take this a step further. Uh, you can, for example, use the painting texture for anything that you vertex submit with a texture. Uh, the player, for example, is currently set to draw with no texture, but if you wanted to, you could use the scribbles for the player as well. So now, I can I have the ability to draw on my player. This is player customization. I could totally call this video Game Maker Player Customization, and it wouldn't be complete clickbait. That's nice. So... What else can I doodle on? Let's doodle on these. Uh, let's doodle on these shapes. Go all out. Uh, let's assign the 
paint text to, for example, how about the cubes? The cubes can be scribbled on as well as the, uh, the octagon and the smooth shading sphere. I'll leave the wall alone. What kind of monster draws on the walls, honestly? Okay. Uh, free mouse and the floor is still being doodled on. So is everything else. That looks very interesting, I must say. And because of the way the texture wrapping is working, it's kind of only appearing on one side of the sphere. I think if I were to like draw a line, yeah, if I were to draw a line in different places, it would actually cross the sphere. That is a very interesting globe. Interesting is the words we'll use. It looks even worse on the octagon. Anyway, uh, my artistic abilities aside, there are uses for this that aren't as comedically goofy as this, I swear. I said player customization as kind of a joke earlier, but you totally can use this to customize your player's uh, skin. Hey. To customize the player texture that you use in the game, whether that's a 2D character in a 3D world or an actual 3D character. You could totally use this to draw sprites on the surface instead of lines where the, uh, where the mouse cursor is. And you could use it to put decorations on a wall or something like that without having to go through the semi-expensive process of drawing loads and loads of sprites on top of something in 3D. And of course, since I cannot get enough of shaders, uh, we will be returning to the subject of using textures and surfaces and whatever it's called when those two worlds collide, uh, using shaders in the future with some other fun things I have planned. So, all right, Harold in the Purple Crayon is what I'm going to call this masterpiece. God, I haven't thought about that in 20 years. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and drawing on the floor and making games. If you want the code for this, it will be in the video description. Did I spell that right? I think I did. I'm not 100% on that. Uh, the code for this will be in the video description. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there are links to that in all the usual places as well. Otherwise, I try to post a couple of these a week. One of these, usually doing things just a little bit less childish than this, and one let's make a tower defense game. I hope you all enjoy that. And enjoy is a word that I would actually use this time. And I will see you all later. Special thanks to David Key, Edward Holt, Indie Punch, Jason, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to hear me say them out loud at the end, head on over to the Patreon page in the video description to join the fun.